In this video, we'll show you how to make the most of AutoRC's free mode for structural design. You'll also learn how to use the plan scanning feature and the automatic design tools. We'll start by setting the unit system. For this example, we'll use normal mode. Tap start project. We'll demonstrate how to create a structural plan using plan scanning mode. Begin by taking a photo of your architectural blueprint or choose one from your device. Make sure the image clearly shows the grid line dimensions. Red numbers indicate values recognized by the AI, and green lines represent the grid lines detected by the app. If the scan isn't accurate, you can retake the photo by tapping the button in the top left corner. Now, select the plan zone, and input the zone's width and length. The app will then analyze and generate the initial beam layout for you. You can now edit the beam plan. You'll have options to modify beams, columns, and grid lines. Let's start with editing the beams. There are two editing modes. Arrays mode and draw mode. If the beam lines appear brown, you're in arrays mode. Select beams by dragging or tapping. Tap again to deselect. Tap the trash bin to delete all selected beams, or use cancel to clear your selections. Pinch out to zoom in. Drag with your finger to adjust the position. Lock position. Double tap the screen to switch between modes. In draw mode, start by selecting a reference point. Enter the distance you want to draw, then choose the direction of the beam, or drag to the desired location. Swiping is considered a way to draw or to move to the next grid line position. Depending on the direction of the swipe. When editing columns, you can select them by either swiping or tapping. Tap delete to remove selected columns, or tap add column. You can also set the starting coordinates manually. When editing grid lines, the coordinates will adjust based on the direction of the arrow. Using the starting point as a reference. To update the values, edit them directly in the text fields below. In this example, the AI has accurately detected the grid line positions. However, we'll make a manual adjustment to show you how it works. Enter the dimension you want to change, then tap Apply. Next, input the wall loads. The system will automatically detect wall thicknesses based on line weight in the plan, using the list shown below. Tapping an item again will deselect it. You can select lines by tapping or swiping. Tap again to undo a selection. Use the slider bar to adjust the distance. Swipe from the bottom of the screen to the left. Or swipe from the top to the right to fine-tune positioning. Tap the trash bin icon to delete selected items. Once all walls are defined, tap the button in the top right corner to apply changes. The system will convert the wall data and return you to the plan editing screen. In this screen, you can do everything just like in plan scanning mode, including double tapping to switch to arrays mode. Drawing works a little differently here. It draws both the beam and the column by default. If you don't want to include a column, just uncheck the box. You can tap the camera icon and switch to it instantly. Next step. Define the slab and its load. The left field is for live load, and the right field is for dead load. Enter the slab load and select the slab type from the bar below. For precast slabs, you'll need to add the self-weight of the slab manually. For cast-in-place slabs, the system will automatically include the self-weight after design. Once all the slabs are added, you can edit them by tapping on any one of them. Choose a new slab type, then tap Edit. Double tap to view its loads. You can also add extra loads manually here. Once selected, enter the values in the fields at the bottom. You can input both uniform loads and point loads in detail. 
We'll now show how to apply a point load as an example. Use the slider bar to adjust the location. Go to the point load section. Enter the load value and choose the type of force. DL stands for dead load, and LL stands for live load. Once applied, the load value will appear on the plan. You can delete a load by tapping the delete icon. You can also view a rough load diagram here. Next, we'll show how to break beam continuity. Select the beam you want to modify. The left button breaks the continuity, while the right button restores it. Notice how the arrows split apart when continuity is removed. Go back to the moment diagram, and you'll see that the beam is now considered discontinuous. To restore continuity between beams, Select the beams you want to connect and tap the Merge button. This function is useful when the beam levels differ significantly, causing the connection to break, or when the reinforcement is intentionally designed to be discontinuous, or when the continuous beam assumption doesn't reflect the actual structural behavior. In this example, removing the continuity gives a result that more closely matches the real behavior. If you'd like to take your analysis even further, you can subscribe and unlock 3D structural analysis for more advanced modeling. Next, set up the design parameters. We will use the strength design method. Adjust the safety factors used in the design accordingly. Set the material strengths based on actual usage or legal requirements. FC is the concrete compressive strength. FY or FV refers to the yield strength of the reinforcing steel. This field controls the beam's deformation limits. The number entered will be divided by the beam length and compared against the allowable deflection value. There are two methods for beam analysis to choose from. The first method is based on influence lines, where the moving live load is considered to travel along the beam. Critical values from each case are collected and used for design. The second method assumes the live load is distributed across the entire structure. For supports, you can model them as pinned meaning the beam ends are free to rotate without restraint, as shown in the diagram, or as fixed, where the beam ends are restrained. You can also analyze both cases and use the critical values from either for design. If you don't have a specific beam size in mind or aren't sure which cross-section to use, choose the first option. The AI will assist you in selecting the appropriate beam section. The second option is suitable if you already know the beam size and the reinforcement you want to use. The third option offers additional settings to analyze the reinforcement without compression force at certain positions, which is ideal for precast beam structures. Let's set up an example beam cross section and name the beam group list. Program selection logic. The program initially uses the section size entered by the user. If the required stirrup spacing is less than the specified minimum, it will automatically select a larger section. For main reinforcement, if the calculated number of bars matches the input section, that section will be used. If not, the program will move to the next available section. The design prioritizes the calculated number of main bars to ensure structural safety. View the structural group. Any beam without a name will be automatically assigned one by the program using the letter B, followed by its sequence number in the beam group. For example, B3. You can also name the beams here manually. Edit the entire beam group.
Edit individual beams. We'll edit a beam as an example. Select all. Make your edits, then confirm. You can also cancel the selection or undo changes. You can select the entire beam group from the list on the side. Clicking again will deselect. View detailed reinforcement information. When working, you may provide stirrups at closer spacing than the calculated value, but never farther apart. Similarly, Reinforcement bars can be longer than required, but never shorter. View the analysis graph and calculation reports. Zoom in or out by swiping with your fingers. Edit slabs and review the calculation details. Or modify entire groups right here. However, you won't be able to set spacing distances that are too wide or too close beyond the calculated limits. The system locks these for safety. To add a cantilever slab, start by selecting a reference point. Then enter the distances and choose the direction for each axis. Input the loads and press OK. Save your plan. After using the app for a while, this page might not open immediately. You can tap Watch Add to proceed. Name your file and save it. Next, we'll create the roof beam layout using this plan as a reference. Tap Back. Choose not to retain slab and load data, and delete any unused beams. Select no slab, then enter an approximate roof load. Adjust the beam sizes as needed. Go to the Save screen, rename the plan, and save it. After that, we'll combine both plans into a single structural model. Select the plan to be combined and go to Combine Plans. Enter the elevation and wind load for the selected plan. Add additional floor plans as needed. Next, configure the design settings. Perform the design using the strength design method, just like when designing the beams earlier. This value will be used to divide the load that has been multiplied by the safety factor, effectively reverting it back to the original load before the safety factor was applied. This is necessary for calculating the required number of piles or the size of the spread footing. In this case, we are designing a piled foundation. Set the applied load and pile dimensions here.
Design parameters can also be adjusted here. If the load capacity per pile increases, the total number of piles needed will decrease. However, this depends on the pile size, pile length, and the soil conditions at the construction site. The model will be saved. If you return after some time, you won't be redirected here automatically. Please tap Watch Add to continue. View all structural components. You can review the summary of loads and moments for both the column and the foundation at this section. View the analysis graph. You can return to edit the floor plan here. Return to the 3D model from here.